Chapter 10, Section 10.2 Forces and Vectors You can write forces uh, uh, as a vector using I and J notations or as a column vector. You can find the resultant of two or more forces given as vectors by adding their vectors. Okay, so let's go through the example one. The forces, the forces, 2i plus 3j, 2i plus 3j Newton, 4i minus j Newton, minus 3i plus 2j Newton, and a i plus b j Newton acts on an object act on an object which is in equilibrium which is in Equilibrium. Find the values of A and B. Okay, the most important point here, if the object or particle is in equilibrium, it means some of the forces here must be equal to zero. Okay, so let's write down all the forces in form of column vector. That's always easy and convenient to add or subtract vector uh, forces when it's in form of column vector. Okay, so the coefficient of i and j represent the x and y basically in each vector. Okay, so a b equals so as I said, so it should be some of these forces must be equal to zero, meaning some of the i components must be equal to zero, as well as some of the y components must be equal to zero. So therefore, addition of all these four forces, to, uh, four components of i, must be equal to zero. Okay. So therefore, 2 plus 4 is 6, minus 3 is 3. So therefore, a is equal to 3. And similarly, 3 minus 1 add 2 must be equal to zero. Therefore, three minus one is two, two add two is four. Therefore, B is equal to minus four. So therefore, the vector AI plus BJ is the same as three I minus four J. Okay, next example. Example. Okay. In this question, I represent the unit vector GU east and J represent the unit vector GU north. Okay, a particle begins at rest. Okay, a particle begins at rest. Okay, basically the initial velocity we need it is equal to zero. It is acted on by three forces. It is acted on by three forces as well. So 2i 
plus j, 3i minus 2j, and minus i plus 4j. Yeah. A. Find the resultant force in the form of pi plus qj. Find the resultant force in form of pi plus qj. Okay, some of the forces would be the resultant force. Okay, so two one add three minus two add minus one four is equal two add three is five minus one is four one add minus two is minus one add four is three so since we've been asked to work out the resultant force in terms of pi plus qj we need to convert the column vector into pi plus in form of pi plus qj which will be 4i plus 3j okay part b work out the magnitude and bearing of the resultant forces work out the magnitude and bearing of the resultant force. So First of all, let's draw the or sketch the diagram for this force. Okay, so it says 4i. So if here is the origin, 4i would be 4 units. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is 4i plus 3j. So would be adding it should start from end of the first one three j and the direction is in positive direction for both of them because both of them are positive if it was for example minus four i it would be in this direction in negative x direction the magnitude of the resultant forces would be sum of these two forces so Start, the sum of these forces will start from beginning of the first force and will end at the end of the second force. Okay, let's call this one R. So we know that 4i okay, is in direction of east and 3j is in direction of north. To find magnitude of these forces, all we need to do is just use the basic Pythagoras. Theory. Okay, so we know this is 90 degrees angle, so therefore r is equal to square root of the 4 squared plus 3 squared. r is equal to 16 plus 9, which is square root of 25, and therefore 5 newtons. Okay, so to work out the direction okay bearing bearing is always a start from north so therefore all we need to do just draw a line toward north okay here is the line toward north okay we want to work out this angle i call this one beta and i call this one alpha i can easily work out alpha and the relationship between alpha and beta 
is 90 minus, so theta is equal to so 90 minus alpha. We know that the line toward north and east, they make uh, angle of 90 degrees, right angle. And if we work out this one and take away from 90, we will get this angle. Okay, how we can work out alpha? We know that tan alpha, we've got opposite and adjacent, is equal to 3 quarters. Alpha is equal to tan minus 1 of 3 quarters. Okay, which is 36.9 to 1 decimal places. 36.9 one decimal places. Therefore, theta is equal to 90 minus 36.9, which is 53.1. However, we have to write down 0 0.53.1 degrees. Since it is bearing, so we need to use the three digits before this one. However, it could be zero five three times if it has a whole number rather than this one. Okay. Part C. Describe the motion of the particle. Describe the motion. Of the particle. Okay. So we can say the particle accelerates in the direction of the resultant force. So always remember the particle always accelerates in the direction of the resultant force. Particle accelerates in the direction of the resultant force. Okay. So, we got to end up this section, section 10.2, forces and vectors. After watching this lecture, you will be able to do exercise 10b from a Excel textbook. Exercise 10b, which is page 161. And hundred and sixty-two. Okay. So next video, hopefully we will go through some of the questions from exercise ten.